So working in ed early education isn't for everyone. It should be something we, we train and specialise people for. It's a professional career. And I think other, country, other European countries have taken a very different approach to the way they think about early education. And this is reflected in the amount of flexibility they allow on ratios. They think that the quality of staff in nurseries is the most important thing. Whereas in England, nursery staff may look after no more than four two-year-olds. In France, they can be responsible for eight. In Ireland, they can be responsible for six. And there are no national limits set in countries like Denmark, Germany or Sweden because they trust childcare professionals to make the right judgments about children in their nurseries. And that is why we're encouraging nurseries to use their professional judgment and enjoy greater flexibility. We're only doing this where nurseries are employing highly qualified staff and we see this as a way of improving qualifications and levels of pay. Where there is an early years educator leading a group of children, we plan to allow ratios for two-year-olds to rise from four children per adult to six children per adult, and for ones and under to rise from three per adult to four. We are not changing the ratios for three and four-year-olds, but we would like to see nurseries in the private and voluntary sector using the full allowance of one to 13 with a teacher to have traditional style nursery classes. Many of our leading providers are successfully delivering this model, including the academy I mentioned earlier. But that happens less in the private and voluntary sector for various reasons. We think that teacher-led groups with structured activity are a good thing. And Ofsted has made it clear to me that they do too, and they want to see evidence of well-qualified staff engaging directly with children. Of course, parents may demand other approaches and other learning styles, and I think it's important parents have that choice. But it's also important that parents have the choice of this model, which works well, and I've seen work very, very well in France. We also want to see parents have the choice of more structured group care for their two-year-olds, like the French crèche system. These groups would be led by a qualified early years educator. We know that two is an absolutely crucial age where children are learning the structure of language and vocabulary, and it's very important to have well-qualified people. We are hardwired to be inquisitive. We want to learn and we take pleasure from learning. Think about the joy on a toddler's face as they take their first steps, or how proud a four-year-old is when they earnestly tell you what the French word for yes is. I totally reject the idea that children in a nursery can either have an educational day or an enjoyable one. Ros Marshall of Kids Unlimited has proved that this is bunk. She does outstanding work for example, encouraging children to learn how to count when they are playing musical instruments. Far from killing any pleasure that a child might get out of learning, structure and clear guidelines provide reassurance and safety. Rather than crushing spontaneity and discovery, they offer an essential framework for precisely those things. And we are absolutely clear that this is fully compatible with the EYFS. My insistence that children are well-educated from the very beginning of their lives isn't just about getting ahead in the global race, <coughs> crucial though that is. It's a recognition that children's lives should be complete and fulfilled. This is not just about the economy, it's also about personal happiness. We also want to see more options for home-based care. We've seen a decrease in the number of childminders over recent years. This is in part because childminders have to be business owners as well as child carers. When setting up, this means registering with Ofsted, the local authority, finding training, marketing the service to parents and collecting fees. And as well as the role of caring for and educating young children, there's a lot of paperwork, administration, chasing up parents for payments and jumping through hoops set by the local authorities involved. Some people want a simpler way to enter the profession. So we are setting up one-stop shops, or rather we are enabling people to set up one-stop shops called childminder agencies, which will do the practicalities. So this means that somebody interested in being a childminder can go to a local agency, have their premises checked out, receive training, and be approved all by a single organisation, which itself will be regulated by Ofsted. This agency will deal with government funding, 
marketing services, placing children and collecting fees from parents. Similar organisations in France and the Netherlands have created a good entry route for childminders, meaning there are many more childminders in compared to the population size of those countries than there are here in England. These measures, coupled with the removal of hoops to jump through from local authorities to receive government funding, should see a revival in this very important form of care. This will be particularly important for parents in rural areas who have a lack of facilities nearby, for those working shifts or irregular hours like MPs, and I would like to have this opportunity myself, and other people who want more flexible home-based care. And what's more, agencies will be able to offer cover if a childminder is on holiday or ill. And we've all been in the kind of situation where childcare arrangements have fallen through in the last minute. And these agents will be able to provide for that. I know at the moment what I do is get on the phone to Leeds to my mum uh, to come and sort the situation out. But we need more options available for parents doing those more flexible jobs. We also want to give childminders more flexibility. At present, the ratio of one child under the age of one per childminders means that twins are a no-no without special permission. The limit for under fives is three children, which is frankly fewer than many families have to cope with. And this gives rise to the situation I saw in my constituency, where two qualified childminders looking after six children between them, if they need a pint of milk, one of them has to take three children to the shop so that they're in compliance with Ofsted rules. In France, a childminder can look up up to after, oh, sorry, can look after up to four children under five. In Denmark, childminders are able to look after five children, and there are no ratios at all for childminders in Sweden. We will bring our rules in line with France so that childminders can look after up to four under fives, of which no more than two are under one. This is, of course, a maximum. It's not a requirement, and that's something I would, a point I would make about all our changes. And we would expect childminders to do what they or their agency are comfortable with. We're not asking anyone to do anything that they're not comfortable with. What we want is more professional <coughs> judgment being exercised by childminders and nurseries. It's vital that the inspection regime is rigorous, comprehensive, clearly understood and fair. It must focus solely on what matters and not distract providers from looking after children and educating them. We are working with Ofsted to implement further improvements to the current regime, including increasing the number of HMIs covering the early years and concentrating inspection on those weaker providers that need most attention. I think this will help address some of the issues that Policy Exchange identified in their reports um, about poor quality. We are now saying that Ofsted alone will be the arbiter of quality. At the moment, local authorities also check the quality of provision which is both a waste of resources and creates extra barriers for new providers trying to set up. Although we fund three and four-year-old places at £2,200 per head, which is enough to cover the cost to nurseries for 15 hours a week, not enough of this money is reaching the front line, and I know that's a major concern for many providers. Local authorities retain £160 million annually of the funding intended to deliver early education to three and four-year-olds, some of which is spent on duplicating work that Ofsted is already doing. Ending this situation will mean that as much money as possible goes to the front line. And I'm looking further at this because even with this change, I'm still not convinced that enough money is going to the front line. And we're looking at further improvements to the delivery system. Our commitment to a fair regime is such that we have heeded calls from those who ask for a new route allowing for paid for reinspection. If a nursery that received a satisfactory rating is taking steps to reach good or outstanding, I want this to be recognised and updated swiftly. Professionals should also be given the chance to think creatively about how they want children to learn. <coughs> Better qualified staff will be able to do that. For some years now, politicians have stressed the importance of lifelong learning. But the term tends to be used to remind us that a person's education shouldn't end when they leave school or university. I believe that learning should genuinely be lifelong, which means it should start 
from the moment a child enters the world. We know that the first few years of our life shape the development of our brains. The evidence is clear that qualified teachers are best placed to offer strong developmental learning. Therefore, we need to increase the number of teachers involved in the early years. This is all part of our efforts to increase the quality of teaching across the piece for all ages. We will shortly publish the report by our Commission for Childcare, which I know many people are at bated breath waiting for, which will look at ways to tackle the high cost for parents and get better value for money. And we will be making sure that working parents find childcare more affordable. The status quo is neither fair to providers nor allows enough money to reach the front line. And I appreciate your patience in waiting to hear more about this. Getting the funding right is a necessary condition of providing world-class childcare, but it is not sufficient. It is not good enough to carry on with an unreformed system where frontline workers are paid £6.60 an hour. A greater focus on quality and value for money matters enormously as well. Some children enjoy more advantages than others, but all children are vulnerable, and of course parents want their child to have the best possible start in life. I want every child to spend their early years learning, exploring, enjoying and growing, and for them to arrive at primary school well prepared and confident. And by driving up standards right across early education, we can give parents the sense of security they crave and every child the care and attention they need.